Hello, my name is Paul Priestley. Welcome to Artists in School, the home of art history for young people and for interested amateurs. Today we're going to be looking at the Russian artist, Marc Chagall. Wonderful painter. The painter of love. Once described as a poet with the wings of a painter, Marc Chagall often said that he preferred the company of poets to that of painters. He disliked art theories and the restrictions of art movements, so he never became a surrealist or a cubist painter. As you'll see in his paintings, the central theme of Chagall's work is love. Simple as that. As the artist himself said, in life, just as on the artist's palette, there is but one single colour that gives meaning to life and art, the colour of love. Marc Chagall, an Orthodox Jew, was born in Vitesk in Russia on the 7th of July 1887 as Moshe Segal. He was the eldest of nine children. His father worked for a fish merchant and his mother ran a grocery shop. As a boy, he attended the Jewish primary school and the municipal school in Vitesk. Later in life, he described Vitesk as a strange town, an unhappy town, a boring town. Yet it features in many of his paintings. At the age of 18, Chagall started at the art school of the painter Yehuda Penn. But he left after two months to work as a retoucher for the Vitesk photographer. Later, in 1907, Chagall moved without a permit to St. Petersburg to take up an apprenticeship as a sign writer. He lived there in great poverty before joining the painting school of the Imperial Society for the Promotion of the Arts. 1909 brought yet another move when Chagall joined the more liberal Savanskova Art School. Here he studied with Leon Baksk, the Russian painter who revolutionised theatrical design and costume and set design. Baksk introduced Chagall to more modern approaches of artistic expression and crucially taught him to use colour as a basic element of his work. Despite spending time studying, Chagall still found time to visit his family in Vitesk. On one occasion, he met Bella Rosenfeld, the daughter of a wealthy jeweller, who six years later would become his wife. After receiving a grant in 1910, Chagall moved to Paris, where he changed his name to the more French-sounding Marc Chagall, and in 1911 moved into his own studio in La Rouche, the legendary Parisian artist colony. It was here he became friends with the artists Ferdinand Leger, Amendo Mogadigliani, and Shyam Soutine. The following year, Chagall exhibited three paintings at the Salon des Independents in Paris. The first was a painting called The Drunkard. Note the reverse perspective, the flattened and disjointed objects and clashing complementary colours. The second painting, dedicated to my fiancé, was based very much around his Jewish-Russian background and, of course, Bella. The third painting was Russia, Asses and Others. Notice how the contrast between the real and the unreal causes reality to appear miraculous or even dreamlike. Later, in 1914, Chagall held his first one-man exhibition in the Berlin Gallery Der Sturm. Later that year, he got a three-month visa to visit Russia, but couldn't return to Paris because of the outbreak of the First World War. On the 25th of July 1915, Chagall married Bella Rosenfeld in Vitesk. Shortly afterwards, they moved to St. Petersburg, where Chagall worked as a clerk in the press department for the War Economy Office in lieu of military service. 
Chagall exhibited in 1916 45 paintings at the exhibition of the avant-garde artist group the Jack of Diamonds in Moscow. Following the October Revolution of 1917, he was offered the post of the Head of Fine Arts in the newly created Ministry of Culture, but he declined the appointment and returned with Bella and his daughter to Vitesk. By 1919, Chagall had set up the Vitesk School of Fine Arts with artists Kasimir Malievich and Elder Zitsky as part of his teaching team, but things didn't go well. And after numerous arguments about artistic direction, Chagall upped and left. Shortly afterwards, Malievich renamed the art school the Suprematist Academy. The abstraction of the Suprematists was not something that appealed to Chagall. Two years later, in 1922, Chagall left Russia for good. He lived in Berlin for a few months before moving back to Paris. He returned to his old studio in La Roche, but the paintings he had left before the war had disappeared. He hated the fact that part of his personal history, which the paintings represented, had gone. So for the next three years, he painted replicas and new versions. During these years, he also received a number of commissions, including one for 19 gouaches on the theme of the circus. His reputation was growing, so much so that in 1931 he received an invitation from the mayor of Tel Aviv to spend time in Palestine. Chagall spent three months there with his wife and daughter Ida. The country inspired him to start a new series of etchings on the biblical theme. But the project was not completed and published until 1956. But by 1933, life for Jews, particularly in Germany, was becoming increasingly difficult. Later that year, a number of Chagall's paintings were publicly burnt by the Nazis outside of the Mannheim Art Gallery's exhibition on cultural Bolshevism. During the next couple of years, Chagall managed to visit Poland and Italy. But pressure on Jews in Europe was increasing. In 1937, on the orders of the Nazi regime, all Chagall's works were removed from German museums. Three of those paintings were shown in the notorious Degenerate Art Exhibition, alongside other confiscated artworks by internationally famous artists. 1938 saw Chagall become a French citizen. Shortly after the outbreak of the Second World War, Chagall moved his family to the relative safety of the south of France. The following year, Varian Fry, the director of the American Emergency Rescue Committee, visited Chagall in France. He brought with him an invitation from the Museum of Modern Art in New York for Chagall and his family to come to the United States. Shortly afterwards, the Chagalls moved to Marseille before setting sail for the United States. On the 23rd of June 1941, the same day that Germany invaded Russia, Chagall and his family arrived in New York. In New York, Chagall met a number of exiled artists, including Piet Mondrian and the art dealer Pierre Matisse, the son of the artist Henri Matisse. Pierre Matisse organised Chagall's first exhibition in America in New York in November 1941. But in 1944, Chagall's wife Bella fell ill with a viral infection. She was taken to a small local hospital that lacked the facilities and expertise to treat her. Bella died just 36 hours after her arrival. Chagall was heartbroken. Chagall painted nothing for the next six months. Ida, Chagall's daughter, was so worried about him, how lonely and morose Chagall had become, she employed a housekeeper, a young English woman named Virginia Haggard, to look after him. She was 28 years his junior and spoke French. She tidied his rooms, cooked and brought him flowers to paint. Eventually, she became his companion and later his lover. 
The relationship lasted until 1951. But in the late 1940s, retrospective exhibitions were held of Chagall's work in New York, London, Zurich and Bern in Switzerland. They were hugely successful, but Chagall longed to return to France. And in 1948, he left America for good. Although he was now internationally famous, his childhood timidity never quite left him. Chagall avoided the limelight and wasn't really interested in fame. In 1950, he moved to Vence in the south of France and intermittently met up with Matisse and Picasso, both of whom had studios nearby. His relationship with Pablo Picasso was problematic. At times he was a friend, at other times very much a rival. Chagall could be quite cynical, once joking, what a genius that Picasso, it's a pity he doesn't paint. Picasso could be equally scathing, although he did once say of Chagall, I don't know where he gets the images, he must have an angel in his head. In 1951 Virginia left him, but the following year Chagall met Valentina Brodsky, who he married on the 12th of July. Their mar marriage gave him new energy and in June of that year he visited Chartres Cathedral to study medieval stained glass window painting. The new medium inspired him and in 1959 he created stained glass windows for the north apse of Metz Cathedral in France. The following year he was commissioned to create windows for the synagogue of the Hebrew University Clinic in Jerusalem. Shortly after their completion, together with the painter Oskar Kokoschka, he was awarded the Erasmus Prize of the European Culture Foundation in Copenhagen. 1964 saw Chagall complete the windows of the Good Samaritan for the memorial to John D. Rockefeller Jr. and the Peace Window for the United Nations building in New York. Chagall travelled to Jerusalem in 1969 to take part in the inauguration of the new building for the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, for which he had created the floor and wall mosaics. In 1970, 50 years after he left Russia, Chagall travelled with his wife to Moscow and Leningrad at the invitation of the Soviet cultural minister he was reunited with his two sisters, who he had not seen for 50 years, but he refused to go back to Verbitsk. During 1975, he produced 50 lithographs illustrating Shakespeare's The Tempest, and also produced several large can canvases with mythological biblical themes. Two years later, at the age of 90, Chagall was awarded France's highest honour, the Grand Cross of the Legion of Honour. During his final years, Chagall completed stained glass windows for St. Stephen's Church in Mainz and the American windows for the Art Institute in Chicago. In 1977, the French president opened an exhibition of Chagall's work in the Louvre in Paris, the first time a living artist had received such an honour. Marc Chagall died at his home in St Paul de Vence at the age of 97 on the 28th of March 1985. He was a complex man, sometimes naive, sometimes sophisticated, shy and brazen, simple and shrewd. He could be stingy but also very generous. He wanted to be regarded as a universal painter, not simply a Jewish artist. However, some critics accused him of repeating himself, possibly for financial reasons. But as Chagall himself said, poets always use the same letters, but out of them they constantly rec recreate different words. Thank you for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed learning about Marc Chagall, wonderful artist. If you have, then please subscribe to my channel. And if you do, please don't forget to click the little black bell because that will help keep you in contact with me and you can see all my latest videos. If you want to support the making of these videos, then please check out my Patreon channel where you'll find lots of interesting rewards in return for your patronage. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!